Indrens was a randomized phase three trial for patients with newly diagnosed multiple myeloma who are not intended for an early autologous stem cell transplant. So either ineligible or people who were preferring to delay the transplant till first progression. And only for newly diagnosed myeloma patients who do not have high risk characteristics like um, translocation 1416, 1420, deletion 17B, high LDH. Uh, or patients uh, with plasma cell leukemia. The study randomized the patients to two different arms, either botasumib with lenalidomide dexamethasone or carfilzomib with lenalidomide dexamethasone. And the intent was to see which of these two triplets uh, would be a more effective and tolerable combination in the initial therapy of multiple myeloma. And as a background, the combination of botasumib lenalidomide dexamethasone is what has been shown in previous phase three trials to be uh, um, effective and um, improving our survival outcomes uh, compared to just lenalidomide dexamethasone. And carfilzomib is a new proteasome inhibitor, which in phase two trials in combination with lenalidomide dexamethasone has been shown to be quite effective. And uh, the question we are trying to answer here is, will replacing uh, botasumib with carfilzomib uh, lead to a better outcome for these patients. The combination of carfilzomib with lenalidomide dexamethasone was found to be have the same effect effectiveness as the VRD combination uh, in terms of uh, efficacy outcomes like progression-free survival. Uh, in terms of um, new toxicity uh, signals, uh, we have not seen anything new that we have not seen with either of these drugs. Again, to remember that both botasumib and carfilzomib have been around for some time, and they are both approved for use in myeloma. Uh, while carfilzomib is approved only for relapse disease, botasumib is approved for use upfront and in the relapse setting. The main side effects that we noticed with uh, botasumib, which was significantly higher in the VRD arm, was peripheral neuropathy, as we would have expected. 8% of patients had a grade 3 or higher peripheral neuropathy. In the KRD arm, we noticed a significantly higher rate of cardiac, pulmonary, and renal toxicity, grade 3 or higher, um, which has been... Um, or at least that spectrum of side effects have been seen in some of the carfilzomib trials, particularly the phase three trial that looked at carfilzomib, melphalan, prednisone uh, to botasumib, melphalan, and prednisone. The overall response rate was quite comparable between the carfilzomib lenalidomide dexamethasone and the botasumib lenalidomide dexamethasone. Both had an overall response rate of about 85%. Uh, the deeper responses, like very good partial response, was more frequent in the carfilzomib lenalidomide dexamethasone arm. When you look at the progression-free survival, they were identical. Both arms had about 34 months PFS um, of, of from the first randomization um, which uh, assigned one of the two treatments. Um, in terms of overall survival, we haven't seen any difference. Um, with the current follow-up at three years, 85% of patients in both arms uh, are alive. Now, we also looked at the progression-free survival in individual subgroups. Uh, when we look at the various subgroups, um, whether it is by patient characteristics like age um, and gender or disease characteristics like ISO stage, cytogenetic findings, um, creatinine and so forth, we again did not see a statistically significant difference between the two arms um, uh, in any of these subgroups that we analyzed. Now, we also looked at the uh, quality of life metrics, and those seems to be quite comparable between the two groups as well. The, what this trial tells us is that the combination of botasumib, lenalidomide, and dexamethasone continues to be the standard initial therapy for uh, newly diagnosed myeloma. However, this trial only looked at the patients who were transplant, who are not intending to go to an early transplant, uh, and also patients with uh, mostly with standard risk multiple myeloma. So two questions still remain unanswered. One is, in high-risk patients with high-risk cytogenetics, uh, will KRD provide an advantage over VRD? Um, that is a question that has not been answered in this trial. 
The second question is, if you're going to go to a stem cell transplant and you're thinking about this four to six cycles of therapy as injection to transplant, then uh, this trial again does not answer the question as to whether KRD or VRD, which is uh, better. Mm -hmm.